Hi, it's Mike Thornton here from Pro Tools Expert, and today we're going to take a look at the new AX64 bit version of the new gen audio stereo pack bundle. And the bundle consists of three plugins. We've got the first one here, the Stereoizer. So this enables us to take mono audio and make it into convincing mono compatible stereo audio. Or we can modify the stereo image of existing stereo content with it. We've then got the Stereo Placer, which allows us to place different elements of the audio into different parts of the stereo image. We'll take a look at that in a little while. And then finally, we've got the Mono Filter, which is really good if you've got some contents, a drum loops which are in stereo, and maybe the low end is also in stereo, you can use the Mono Filter to stabilize that, anchor it up and make it sounding so much more solid. So let's go back to the Stereoizer to start with. And in essence, there are two algorithms in the Stereoizer. There is the IID, the interaural intensity difference, which in plain English basically uh, comes down to the fact that one of the ways that we determine where sound is coming from is whether the sound is louder into our left ear than our right ear. If it's louder into our left ear, we determine that the sound is coming somewhere from our left-hand side. And then the ITD module, the interaural time difference, uses the other technique that our hearing uses to determine where sound is coming from. And how that works is if the sound arrives earlier to the right ear than to the left ear, then we determine that sound is coming from somewhere on our right-hand side. And so the Stereoizer uses both of these techniques to help create stereo audio. So let's start playing some audio and you can get a sense of how this works. So here's a mono acoustic guitar, DI'd, so very flat sounding and obviously very mono. So let's try the IID one first. And the way this works is that essentially are two sets of controls. We could control how wide the effect is going to be with this one, and then we can determine the highest frequency that will be processed and the lowest frequency that will be processed. And obviously the lowest frequency, we can make sure sometimes if there's some low end in this, that that's not being processed. So we keep our solid low end. And then there's this control here, which is a little like these frequency controls, but helps to focus the effect. And you can hear it has quite a significant difference to the sound, so you can play with that and determine what exactly you want it to sound like. There's also a very useful mono control here, so we can collapse it down to mono. And back out again. So we can just check that it's going to sound fine in mono. We've got a resolution control here, which again, it just sort of fills it out and so you can play with that, how detailed you want it or not. And we can flip the process around as well with the invert button. So that's the IID module. So if we turn that off, everything goes down to mono. So let's go to the ITD module. So here we go with the time difference. Now, NewGen stressed that this isn't like the Hass effect where we just put a little bit of delay on one side. This is way more subtle than that. And so they really do make the point that this is also mono compatible because the original Hass effect of just delaying one side is anything but mono compatible. So again, we have our high frequencies bring that down, bring up the low frequencies, so we can adjust that, adjust the width that the effect is having, and we can also bring the two together. We can now adjust these, so we can still control them separately if we want to, or we can link them together. So now, as I adjust the width of the IID, 
the width of the ITD works as well, and the same with the frequencies. They both work together. We've also got an acuity control over here, which sort of really is sort of acting on the density of the ITD. And there's this fill option. Now, New Gen do say that this fill option is not mono compatible. So if that's an issue for you, then do be aware of that. We can also put some dynamics into it and so actually modify the process by modulating it with a sine wave and controlling its depth or we can lock it to the tempo of the session as well. There are lots of opportunities for dynamic adjustment of the effect. So that's the stereoizer module. So now let's move on to the stereo placer. So if we just clear off these settings so we can start from scratch. So here's our first one. I'll just bring that back down to the middle so we can see here's number one. And so here I have a conga loop. And so what we can do is we can start to tune this to particular sounds. And to make that even easier, we can just solo this first band and tune it to find one of the sort of conga notes. And then I can just click again. And now this one is still in solo. So we can find the next note. Now we can find another one. And then we can find another one. And then we can find this sort of clicky sound. And then when I take the solo off, we now have our stereo, our stereo version of this mono loop. So again, I just hit bypass. There's the mono version. And here's the stereo version. You can see here that we can actually adjust, we can have one of the bands as a low shelving or we could go for a high shelving on the top one if we wanted to. I'll put that back to bell. And also if there was an element of audio that had harmonics into it, we can then extend the peaks out to cover the harmonics as well. So very, very easy to use. Great feature to have the solo. We can work out exactly what's going on with each of these different bands. And it really does enable us, especially for things like congas where you've got different notes, you can get a really nice stereo effect if you weren't able to record the congas in stereo or you want to have this additional effect where different notes come in different parts of the stereo image. So that's the stereo placer module. And then finally in the group of three is this mono filter. Now sometimes what you can have is a drum loop where the low end has been stereoized in some description and really stereo bass causes more problems than it solves. In the early days of vinyl we had no choice, everything had to be in mono otherwise it wouldn't cut the vinyl record. But with digital recordings people have started to stereoize the low end but it does tend to cloud and muddy the waters somewhat because we, we find it very difficult to place the location of low frequencies. And so it can get very unclear as to where things are coming from. So we can use the mono filter. So what we can do is to push the high end out and push there. So now what's happening is everything below 200 is being brought down to mono. We can control exactly where that goes. We can control the width of the low end so if we don't want to collapse it completely to mono we don't have to and we can control the width of the top end too and we can listen to the low end 
So that's what's been monoed at the moment. We can listen to the stereo. So that's what's still being kept in stereo. And then we can listen to the whole thing. And you can see at the moment, the analysis is in sort of third octaves. Well, we can adjust that to more of a spectrogram if we want to. I tend to prefer to watch it in third octave. It's just a little bit clearer to see what's happening. And so again, it's a really useful tool uh, in dealing with uh, stereo content that shouldn't be stereo at lower frequencies and really, really helpful. So we have this great package of modules. We've got the stereoizer where we can make mono content into stereo or we can modify the stereo width and the stereo sound of existing stereo content. We've got this stereo placer which allows us to place specific elements of the sound around the stereo image. And then we finally got the mono filter which enables us to tidy up the stereo image and collapse it down to mono for the low frequencies. So that's a quick look at the new Gen Audio Stereo Pack bundle. I'll see you again soon.